Okay, everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World. We're live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, where we bring you the smartest people on the planet. We extract knowledge, we cover enterprise IT, cloud, big data, mobile, social, and we're here at EMC World in Las Vegas. We were just listening to Joe Tucci and Pat Gelsinger, big keynotes this morning, about 13,000 people in the audience. Uh, the show grows every year. Uh, EMC, as Joe Tucci says, is the, the, the smallest of the big uh, and uh, growing quite rapidly and, uh, and, and now becoming a much more strategic component of IT organizations. Used to be EMC, just purely a storage company. We're seeing EMC transform itself. Uh, and we're here to talk about that. We have Rick, Rick Walsworth, who is the Director of Product Marketing for the IMG Group. Uh, at EMC, Rick, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, it's good You've to be back, before. I appreciate good to see it, you again. yeah. And I'm joined by my colleague, David Floyer, who good. is the uh, CTO of Wikibon. David. Good afternoon. Thanks Everybody. for sitting in, and uh, giving my co-host John Furrier a break. So, um, so Rick, transformation, right? I mean, transformation is about cloud, it's about big data, it's about simplicity, making things easier. You guys have some announcements yep. this week. Um, uh, uh, AppSync, DataBridge, a couple things we're going to talk about. Why don't you give us the high level and right. then we can get into it. And at, at the end of the day, it's all about creating your IT organization and turn it into a service. And the ability to be able to offer services on the fly around data protection, and that's really where AppSync fits in. The ability to be able to take what are typically very manual processes, and the ability to be able to take those manual processes, now automate them, and create a service architecture that allows you to be able to scale these out on a very simplified fashion. So if I look at AppSync, AppSync really has kind of three tenets. The first one is simplification. Everything from the installation to the operation is really simplified in such a way that you can deploy these services very, very quickly. The other side is self-service. So the ability to be able to empower the application owners to be able to take advantage of the fact that now they have the ability to be able to manage their own copies. So if I want to be able to create test and development copies or, or copies for uh, my sandbox, I can now do so on the fly, but allow the DBAs to handle their own storage, right? And then on top of that, the ability to be able to scale it, right? To be able to go into these environments and scale them out, start very small, but then start to grow these environments very, very nicely. Yeah, so when you talk about those three attributes, simplicity, self-service, and scale, I mean, obviously the, the cloud comes to mind, the Absolutely. internet giants, I mean, I think the internet giants have, have paved the way. They put a lot of pressure on IT, yep. right? We, CEOs and C-level executives go home on the weekends and they maybe hit their Facebook or their Gmail and they say, wow, this is so easy. Now, of course, it's, you can't just translate that to exactly. IT. That's the big challenge that you have because you got hundreds, maybe thousands of applications. Um, but David, you, we talk about this all the time. You're seeing uh, sort of a schism between traditional IT and these sort of new internet giants, the cloud service providers. Um, can we close that gap? Um, absolutely. Um, and you can learn from it. Th there are different challenges, and the challenges uh, that uh, IT shops have, you said, is diversity, mm -hmm. the number of these applications, and, uh, the, and because you've got that diversity, you've got challenges like how do you maintain application consistency? Exactly. How do you make the applications uh, allow themselves to be managed? And probably one of the premier environments at the moment is uh, is Microsoft mm -hmm. um, because of their investment in VSS exactly. and other technologies like that. And so, w one of the things I'm interested in is, w from from your point of view, you, 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 you've uh, you've announced uh, AppSync, mm -hmm. which looks really good from a, from a show point mm -hmm. of view. But what environments are you covering, and what, what what environments are you seeing yourself cover in the future? Yeah, it's a great question. And and what we did is we really drew a bullseye around that Microsoft stack. Right. And to be even more specific, Microsoft Stack's running in virtual environments, so I take my Exchange server, my SQL environment, I virtualize it, and now I can run that on a virtual environment, and then really, at, at the onset, looking at that mid-range market, so looking at the VNX. So we wanted to be you know, just very, very focused on how do you drive those services out at that portion of the market, because that's where we're seeing all the growth. Absolutely. And then as you pointed yeah. on also, the ability to take advantage of some of the tools that the application vendors provide and then to integrate with that so that now I can seamlessly create application consistent snapshots and then allow the IT, um, either IT administrator or the, or the DBA or the to VMA. be able to manage, yeah. exactly, yes. or even yeah. the VMware, exactly, yeah. to, to be able to do that within vCenter now. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in how I access that data 
uh, on a real-time basis. Right. So we just did a survey on Wikibon of, uh, of our community members uh, on IT transformation, mm -hmm. and we asked them, you know, some one of those condition response questions, which of the following best describes your your attitude toward or where you're at with your regard to your transformation. Two things stood out. One group, about 30% of the respondents said, it's really around the infrastructure. That's mm -hmm. our main focus. The other group um, said, it's re we're really driving hard toward service catalogs yep. and, and IT Absolutely. as a service. And, and uh, my sense is that's what, it's that latter piece that AppSync is really designed to do. Talk about that a little bit. Exactly, because now what I have the ability to do is now I can define services on a very repeatable basis. I say for my uh, high-end exchange environments, I'm going to create a platinum service tier, and that platinum service tier is going to give me synchronous uh, replication and the ability to do recovery on the fly. Now what I can do with that is I can now take that and roll that out on a, on a fairly wide basis. So I have the ability to be able to take those services on a very repeatable basis and offer that to the tier of customers that demand that type of service. But then I may have other customers that say, I have, I don't need that synchronous recovery. I can, I can live with async recovery. So now I can create another service tier to be able to do that as well. So it allows you now, to, within that service catalog that you mentioned, to be able to create these services and then roll them out on a very repeatable basis. Yeah, because a lot of services are, are delivered historically as one size fits all. Mm -hmm. This is exactly. it. You know, take data protection, for example. Yep. You know, you got you know, daily, uh, daily incremental and weekly full. Right. You know, that's it. You know, or you know, if you got a lot of yeah. money, you can maybe go right. out and buy SRDF or right. something right. for this. That's the old model. Right, but that is changing. Isn't Absolutely it? Is changing. Absolutely. And so we take advantage of technologies like RecoverPoint that give you the ability to not only have continuous replication, but then also the ability to be able to roll back to any point in time, and then as you mentioned, to integrate with the applications, applications themselves, themselves to yeah. create application consistent bookmarks so that as the exchange owner, I know that point in time, my exchange environment is exactly um, synchronized. So, so um, I, I think that's a very powerful vision. So where do you see yourself taking AppSync? Because at the moment, as you said, it's targeted at quite right. a small area. Right. It's, uh, it, it deals with SQL, it deals with Exchange. Yep. Um, that's that's a good world, but it's not the whole world. Yeah, absolutely. So broadening that out, I mean, you know, where we see this this going is around environments such as Oracle, right? Where you have a lot of the same challenges within an Oracle environment. I need to make sure that that database is in a consistent state. So Oracle, SAP, so really now starting to move up the stack into you know, some of the more critical applications and leveraging the same capabilities, but now doing so for the mission critical apps as well. Okay, and so um, and there's a hodgepodge of things you've got out there, with, with all due respect. Yeah, so yeah. You've got your uh, uh, DPAs, you've got yeah. your, uh, uh, what are they called? The replication, uh, replication manager. managers, right. all the things like that. Absolutely. So, What's happening to those? Yeah, yeah. So, how, how does all this? So, fit great together? question, and one we get all the time, right? Yeah, our, sure. our, our field, our customer I mean, so wants to know, right? They've got those installed, right? At the moment. And they have them installed, and they'll continue. I mean, we're going to continue to make investments in those products, but where we see that division is a replication manager really serving the kind of high end of the space: okay. SAP, Oracle, Symmetrics, Vmax. Whereas AppSync's really more targeted for that mid tier. The, the mid tier, market. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. All right. So yeah, messages, those products are not going away. <laughs> right. So, oh, go oh, sorry. Please. Uh, no, no, I, I was going to change the subject to, uh, to, to, to um, DataBridge. Right. And, and well, before, you do, before you do, you mentioned yeah. RecoverPoint. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk a little bit about the whole you know, pressure on RPO and, and RTO? Absolutely. Uh, it's changing. It's, it, it, RPO and RT, uh, RTO uh, is shrinking. Absolutely. The business is demanding tighter RPO, RTO. How does, how, how does this fit into to that trend? Yeah, well, it really takes advantage of it. and takes full advantage of that capability. And the reason for that trend is that the fact that there is much more dependence on the data. I mean, you know, Pat and, and, and Joe even talked about it in the keynote today, talking about essentially the, the tolerance for downtime is going down. And so you have an infrastructure now that can take advantage of that. What AppSync does is it taps into that and now allows you to build those natively into the service plan so you can roll these out on a very repeatable basis. Yeah, okay. And, and there's, there's good, it seems to be very good uh, connection with the snapshot technologies Absolutely. of VNX. Okay. And, and that's been one of your weaknesses, hasn't it? Right, Compared it with some of your competitors who really focused yeah. on that. So you, and, yeah. you think you've caught up now? Or you're, you're, uh, well, cer certainly you have caught up in terms of the uh, ability to be able to leverage you know, uh, small aperture snapshots, leverage those snapshots in conjunction with technologies with such as RecoverPoint. Such as RecoverPoint exactly. and, the, and the 
Exactly. exactly. So I mean, if, if anything, we leapfrog. You know, we see from a com competitive standpoint the ability to take advantage of both those snapshots and and the ability to be able to leverage those for um, you know test dev type environments. But then at the same time, use recover point for real time recovery. So all important is that you can apply differential service exactly. to applications specifically, exactly. and, and one size doesn't yeah, fit all. How do you work with on. other divisions? We had we had uh, BJ Jenkins on here mm -hmm. uh, earlier, and he kind of put forth the the, the vision of what, what I would call the, the time machine for the enterprise. Right. You know, where you're sort of dialing back to okay. you know whatever point you want based on your RPO requirements. Exactly. Um, how do you interconnect? You know, what are the entries and the exits between divisions right. at EMC? Because you got yeah. a lot of technology yeah. across the portfolio. It's getting bigger and, and more complex. And, and each one has its own management product too, right? So oh, yeah, you've got customers probably pulling you in different you know right. ways, it, and different exactly. use cases. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and so that, I think that really kind of heads on to the DataBridge discussion okay. and the ability to leverage an architecture such as DataBridge to be able to start to now bridge together these different um, disparate management technologies, but now start to bring it together. And so what, what DataBridge is, is essentially an environment that allows you to build custom dashboards but make it your data. So I can take, for example, the primary data I'm getting from ProSphere, the backup data I'm getting, you know, what BJ was probably talking about, that I'm getting from DPA, yeah, yeah. and then mash it up against my own environment, which may be customers and, and the rate usage. Now I can get full detailed utilization, but it's relative to my data itself. Mm -hmm. So DataBridge really provides the ability to, to bring these together under one console. And then now, I, as a CIO, I could give you a view of that data that's unique to your what you want to see. Can, can I push on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mashups haven't got the best track record in the world, mm -hmm. have they? And, and one of the challenges of that mashup process Well, why do you say that? I got to interrupt. Like, Google mashups, right? Maps? Yeah, well, yeah but I mean, when you actually look at them in detail, the Google stroke mashups have a very, very clear API and data cleaning. Yeah. They know that that is a map, and they know its coordinates, and they can they can. There's a lot of certainty. Right? There's right. a lot of certainty. Whereas okay. when you're looking at the, the sources of data that you're talking about, there, there, are in, there are not consistent definitions. They come from all over the place. Mm -hmm. They come from different vendors. How do you put a structure around that so that you can get real data out right, of it, right. as opposed to, you know, but, you know, illusionary? Right, data. right. And, and that's really one of the benefits of DataBridge is it gives you the ability to define what those relationships are. I can take the data sets and now map it into specific tenants, specific users, but then once I have that mashup, I can now create customized dashboards. So the, the, the benefit is, is I now have the ability to be able to define what those rules are that, that's relative to my business and then build the dashboards and the apps specific to what I need. So from a user standpoint, it gives you really the ultimate in flexibility because I have the ability to do so myself. So we see really DataBridge as, as a first step to be able to do exactly that. And again, going back to what you said earlier around IT as a service, this really now starts to give you a platform in which you can build these um, dynamic, uh, you know, catalog-based services uh, for cloud-based deployments. Excellent, now we have a segment coming up next with uh, J Jason Buffington, uh, who's with the Enterprise Strategy right. Group. Great segment. And we're going we're gonna to drill in to this a little bit. He just wrote a white paper on DataBridge, so we're going to get his perspective. David, I hope you can stay. Sure. Okay. Yes. So. So first of all, Rick, thanks very much Thank for coming you. on theCUBE. As always, it's great, to, great to see you. All right. uh, great to see stay you. right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this word.